Welcome back, everyone. Uh, we're st still going to be in section uh, 6.1 in our textbook, Linear Algebra Done Openly, uh, about eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Uh, we've seen already what an eigenvalue is, an eigenvector is. So if you missed that, check out the previous, uh, the previous video about that one. And then also in, the, in the, the, another previous video, we've learned how to check to see if an eigen or if a vector is an eigenvector or not. Um, in this video, I want to actually talk about how does one identify if a scalar is an eigenvalue, right? Uh, because when you are checking if something's an eigenvector, you can just multiply the matrix and the vector together. And when you factor the product, the eigenvalue kind of pops out. Um, but in this situation, if we had a matrix A, uh, let, take it to be 1, 6, 5, 2. Uh, this was, of course, the, the same matrix in the last video right there. Uh, could we check if 7 is an eigenvalue of that? Well, the issue is I don't know what vector to check out because if you're an eigenvalue, that means there's some vector x so that multiplying x by a is the same thing as multiplying x by 7. But are we just going to try every vector in the world? Um, well, if we're looking for vectors in R2, there's a lot of options there. We might spend a long time, and I want to keep this lecture video kind of short. Uh, so how can we do that? Well, in order to test if we have an eigenvalue or not, let me kind of give you some explanation how the plan of attack is. If you have an eigenvalue, that means you satisfy this, this characteristic equation right here, ax equals lambda x. Well, this is an equation after all, and if you start manipulating that equation, you could, for example, uh, you could subtract lambda x from both sides of the equation, having the effect it moves it to the right-hand side. So then you get ax minus lambda x equals zero. Um, and of course, multiplying by lambda is the same thing as multiplying by the, by the diagonal matrix, lambda i, where capital I is the identity matrix. And so this is the matrix lambda i right here. This would be the matrix where you have lambdas along the diagonal and zeros everywhere else, okay? And so, so scaling, scaling a, a vector is the same thing as multiplying by a scalar matrix. Uh, this right here is what we call a scalar matrix. And so then the reason I, the reason I want to introduce the scalar matrix is that you'll notice that both terms here are divisible by x. So if we factor it out, we end up with this expression right here a minus lambda i times x equals zero. So what we're gonna see here is that lambda, lambda is an eigenvalue, it's an eigenvalue of a, if and only if um, a minus lambda i is actually singular, right? Uh, so the, is the issue going on here is that this vector x right here, this, th th this x would satisfy this equation exactly when x is inside the null space of a minus lambda i, all right? Now, no, the null space of a l minus lambda i right here, this will always contain zero, but the zero vector. But as we defined earlier, an eigenvector has to be non-zero. So is there any non-zero vector inside of a null space? Um, a non-trivial null space would only happen when your matrix is singular. So we're trying to check is a minus seven i singular or not. So that's what we're gonna that's what we're gonna continue here. We're gonna take a minus seven i, and we have to see if this matrix is singular. And there's a couple ways you could check for singularity. Uh, you could take the determinant of that thing. That's an option. I'm going to try just row reducing it uh, to see what's going on there. So the matrix A was given above, 1, 6, 5, and 2. And we're going to subtract from it the scalar matrix 7s along the diagonal. You subtract 7 from each of these. And so when you do that, you end up with negative 6, 6, 5, and negative 5. Right? Like so. And so... Now with this matrix in hand, we could try to solve the homogeneous system of equations. So we want to we want to uh, solve a minus seven i seven i x equals zero, and so we know that this comes down to solving the augmented system a minus seven seven i augment zero, like so. Now of course when you're augmenting zero. Uh, that doesn't really do much. I mean, I, we, we look at this thing, uh, we would actually take negative 6, 6, 
five, negative five, augment zero, zero. And if you can, if you exclude the last column, it's not such a big deal because for a homogeneous system, as we reduce, this isn't ever going to change anything. Um, some things to notice very quickly is that the first row is everything's divisible by six. So I'm going to divide everything in the first row by negative six. In the second row, everything's divisible by five. So I'm actually going to divide everything by five just for, just for convenience there. Um, and actually, I think, yeah, that, we'll do that. Uh, and so if we, if we do that, this will row reduce. The first one becomes one, negative one, zero. The second row becomes one, negative one, zero. And so you can see right, quite, quite clear here, like, oh, the, the two rows are identical. Just take row two minus uh, row one. And then this thing will row reduce to be one, negative one, zero, and then a row of zero, 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 like so. Um, if we retranslate this system, uh, this augmented matrix as a system of equations, or really in this case, just a single equation, right? Uh, we could determine uh, that x1 minus x2 equals zero. That is to say x1 equals x2. And so we can get a vector x uh, that'll look like one, one, right? So we get this, we get this vector right here. This, this vector right here expands the null space of a minus seven i. And I claim this is an eigenvector right here. And so if we were to check it, so this is just like we did previously, right? If we take the matrix A, and make sure you take the original matrix A, not this, um, not A minus 7i. So if we take A times X, which remember A was 1, 6, 5, and 2. And if you times it by 1 and 1, notice what you get here is you're going to get 1 plus 6 for the first bit. You get 5 plus 2, which is the second bit. And so this ends up with 7, 7, which when you factor out the 7, you get 1, 1 right here. And Bob's your uncle. We found that 1, 1 is an eigenvector, but we also confirmed the fact that we wanted to show earlier is that 7 was a eigenvalue of this. So what we've seen right here in this calculation is that we can see how to check um, if you're... We able to check to see if we had an eigenvalue or not. So coming back up to this location right here, we were prepared to say that yes, seven is an eigenvalue at that location, and that's because uh, that's because the uh, homogeneous system a minus seven i x equals zero has a non-trivial solution. We saw that by seeing the free variable right here in the system. And then as we continue to solve the system, we can actually find an ex a specific eigenvector for that eigenvalue. And so that's kind of impressive. We can, we can find, or that is we can check, is this number an eigenvalue or not by solving this homogeneous system of equations, uh, the ax minus lambda, sorry, the a minus lambda i x equals zero. All right, so stay tuned for, for the next video uh, to kind of see why, well, because we don't just want to guess every single eigenvalue in the world, right? So at some point, we got to figure out how to know, how do you know to guess seven? And we'll talk about that uh, forthcoming. See you next time.